Hi, welcome to my car. Get cozy. Actually, probably don't because it's a really windy day and I just turned my car off. We are going on a bit of an adventure today. We're at Blix, so let's go inside because I need to get some art supplies. You folks requested an art supply haul, which was very convenient since I actually need a couple things. So, let the adventure begin. Dude, I maybe was a little impulsive in there and got more than I thought I would. So, I'm sitting in my car contemplating things <laughs> at the moment. That store was crazy today. There's so many people in there. It was hard to even like think. Mm. Might have to do something festive. Be right back. I have not gotten Starbucks in months, I think. But while I'm out in town close to all this stuff, I just felt like may as well. Caramel brulee latte. This day just keeps escalating. I got Taco Bell because I haven't had Taco Bell in months either. So I'm trying these Fiesta potatoes for the first time because my friend keeps saying they're really good. Then I got lots of soft taco supremes and a nachos bel grande for Dorb and me. So yeah, it's gonna be a good night. I don't really eat fast food that much, but sometimes you just need Taco Bell. You know, you just do. All right, folks, we are back from Blix. It's actually a couple days later. I had a lot going on. I've been shipping out these holiday boxes left and right, and traffic in my shop right now is just really high because of the holidays. So I decided to pick up with this video now. So this was a really big haul, <laughs> and I'm excited to show you everything that we got because you and I will be experiencing these supplies together in videos for years to come, <laughs> and that's exciting. But I do wanna give you folks a disclaimer before I hop into this and show you what I got. So I try not to do hauls super often on my channel because I try to be mindful of people that come from different socioeconomic situations and who have different budgets. And my goal is to always convey to you folks that you can be a good artist no matter what supplies you have. And I never want to make people feel bad about what they do or they don't have. So hauls actually make me kind of nervous. I don't wanna be like flaunty. But I also do want to say that this is my full-time job. And the stuff that I have purchased here is from Blix. It's my favorite art store. And I splurge on art supplies that I really, really like these days because again, this is my full-time job. This is what I do to support my family, to pay my bills. And I like to buy stuff that I know that I can use for years and stuff that I know I'm not just gonna Chuck in the trash, because I don't like it. So many of these things I've actually already used, but some of them are new and I am excited to try them with you. But yeah, no matter what your budget is or where you're at in your art journey, I just want you to know that I support you where you are and um, yeah, you can be a good artist no matter what you have. And I love you folks. First things first, this is not from Blix, <laughs> but I wanted to share it and open it up with you. And this is also not sponsored. I bought this with my own money from my best friend, Chloe Rose. She has a new brand called Artistic Bear Co. And ah, oh my goodness, let me show you this. She made paint brushes. And I talk to her just about every day. She's been working on these four months, like I'm not even joking, probably like half a year by now. And she's been working so hard on them, trying to get everything just right, just up to her liking. 
and uh, I'm so excited to try them. I'm so proud of her. So I actually got the five pack because the six pack sold out by the time I was able to get online. This is what they look like. I'm not really sure if they're available now or not, but I think word on the street, she's doing pre-orders for like March. So if you want them, yeah. Anyway, I'm so proud of her and you guys have no idea how hard she's worked behind the scenes to make this happen. So go show her some love. With that being said, I think we should dig into my haul from Blix. <laughs> Let me just pull out the biggest thing in the bag because this is the reason why I went to Blix. I did it. I decided to go back to Prismacolor pencils. So I think I mentioned earlier in this video, I've tried just about every colored pencil brand that's out on the market at this point. I've been doing art for years and I really like the Karen Dash colored pencil set, but I kind of miss the creaminess of Prismacolors. They make me rage because they break so easily, but also, I miss them. <laughs> so I'm giving them another chance because I'm in this experimental winter mood. If you've been following my art journey for a while, I do dip into colored pencils quite a bit. I think this box is beautiful too because I love butterflies and moths and boom, look what's on their box. This is nice. All right, the next thing. Okay, so I got some watercolor paper. There's two of them here. This is the Arches Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. It is super thick. I really like Arches, and since I've been like daydreaming about painting with watercolor again lately, I decided, well, maybe I'll get some more paper because I think I was running low on this. And I also decided to get another one of these. This is the Hot Pressed Paper. So these are the watercolor blocks, meaning like you don't have to tape it down. It just stays stretched as you uh, paint. I have tried both types in the past and both are great. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna get them both again. So if you're wondering what the difference is between these types of paper, hot pressed is a lot smoother and cold pressed has more of a texture or a tooth to it. It is probably what you're used to when you use watercolor paper. I really like hot pressed if I'm doing a lot of details. Um, sometimes if I'm using gouache, I like to switch over to hot pressed. It's just a personal preference, but yeah. Anyway, I'm stocked on this. This will probably last me two years because I'm primarily an acrylic and oil painter, but I have just been really in the mood to watercolor paint. So let me show you what's next. This bag here, mm, we have to dump it out. We have to dump it out. Look at that. I guess I'll pull out this watercolor palette while I'm at it. So these watercolors here are Daniel Smith watercolors. And I decided that I want to build my own watercolor palette with colors that I typically gravitate toward and use really professional quality watercolors. So watercolors are that one art supply that I've always just gone the really affordable route. So basically, I use whatever has been gifted to me or I find deals and I'm really happy with all the watercolors I've used in the past, but I don't know. I've just been really in the mood to switch things up and I thought, you know, maybe I could build my own palette and see if that inspires me to really dive into watercolor painting more. I am super excited about this color. It is opera pink. <laughs> it just looks so bright and I really don't know, man. I think we're gonna have some fun with this color. So I think in an upcoming video, I will probably build this palette with you folks and we can paint something together. I think that'll be fun. Let's just push all this out of the way. Wait, do you guys wanna see what colors I have? I feel like I typically gravitate toward like greens and blues with watercolors. So since I do a lot of like botanical things, when it comes to watercolor, I have a lot of like greens and blues. I'm excited. Okay, we have another little bag here. Oh, I got two white Prismacolor pencils because I go through these things so fast and I always have to buy new ones. So just got two new ones. But aside from that, because I upgraded my watercolor paints, I wanted to get good brushes because- I suck at taking care of mine. So I got, 
kind of like all the same type of brush here. And I did this because these are only for watercolor and gouache. My other brushes are just gonna stay for oil and acrylic and I'm not gonna be mixing them anymore. <laughs> I have ruined so many watercolor brushes because I'm rough on my brushes. So I'm excited for this. I also made it a point to get larger brushes because with watercolors, I have that problem. I use too small of brushes. <laughs> Stuff just flew out of this brush when I did that. <laughs> anyway, here they are. I'm super excited. Honestly, I can't wait to do a watercolor painting with you folks. I think I tweeted about watercolors a while ago, wanting to use them, but like, what if I change my mind sort of thing? So I sat on it for almost a month and then I decided to get my watercolor stuff. Okay, this bag here, this is just colored pencil paper. I got a gray tone and a white tone and I am kind of a weird person when it comes to colored pencil. I really like this Canson paper that has, there's like a smooth side, and then there's this side here. And this side has a little bit of a tooth to it. And in the past when I've used this in my videos, I always go for the side that has the tooth to it. It's just my preference, um, but you can use either side. It just depends what you prefer. Okay, I have a couple more things in this bag and this one might surprise you because <sighs> this is not something I normally use. These are Faber-Castell Pit pastel pencils. Okay, so here it is. There's 36 colors. Yes. And I am somebody who doesn't like oil pastels, but I have used Derwent's brand of these in the past, the pastel pencils. And I just decided, I just feel like experimenting. We'll see how we feel about them, okay? We'll see how we feel. So I don't like blending stumps. I don't really like touching pastel stuff. It's a sensory issue. I don't like using Q-tips, but I found these and they're technically for pan pastels, but it's like a blending stump that has a sponge tip. And I'm gonna try that for these and we'll see how they work. I will probably be testing these in a video sometime in January or February. We can do a drawing together and that will be fun. Anyway, that's my art haul. And as you can see with this, I didn't get like a ton of different things. Like I'm feeling experimental, but I'm dipping into things that I know I will use for years and years to come. You can kind of view it like I'm investing in my business because that's what this is. But I'm really, really excited and I just can't wait for 2022, which just feels weird to say. Time is flying. I can't wait for 2022 and all the art that we'll make together in videos and all the art that I will make off camera. Um, I think it'll be a good year. That was my haul. But if you made it this far, I have a question of the day for you. What are your top three favorite art supplies? I love hearing that from you folks, the kind of art you do, what you use, because when I read through all your comments, I get to see how many different people are out there and how all of us creative folks, we're all just so different. And that's the beauty of it. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. We are not creating art in this video because I feel like this was a lot. So if you wanna see some art with these supplies, keep an eye out the next couple weeks. Some good stuff is coming. <laughs> all right, have an amazing day. Bye.